Hi, everyone. Welcome to Tuesdays with Rachel. Thank you for joining me this week. Today, I'm going to talk about subitizing. <laughs> I can hear you now. Suba what? <laughs> well, great question. I'm so glad you asked, and I'm going to tell you the answer in just a second. Um, if this is your first time with me, my name is Rachel, and I have been using Right Start Math for 15 years. Subitizing. Now, when I'm introducing a term to my children for the first time, I usually have them repeat it after me. So I'm going to do that with you guys. All right. So I'm going to say the term and I want you to repeat it after me. Subitizing. Good. Subitizing. What is it? Subitizing basically is a quick recognition of quantity without counting. So what does that look like? Can you tell me, tell me how many fingers are here? Three. Right. That is subitizing. You were able to identify that that is three without counting each individual finger, weren't you? All right, let's try another one. How many is that? Seven. Right. Subitizing. You were able to, under, to see that that was seven fingers and you did not have to count them. Why is that? Because our minds can see groups of five or less without having to count. Anything greater than five, though, our minds kind of blur, and we're not able to see, the, see it clearly. And let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to show you a group of apples, and I want you to tell me how many apples there are, but you cannot count, and you cannot group. All right? You ready? Here it is. How many apples are here? Ah, that's not easy. What if I grouped them? Ah, see how much clearer it is when we group by fives. You can see clearly now that that is eight apples. You are grouping by fives. You are subitizing. Our world is surrounded by groupings of fives, right? Time, money, even Roman numerals. Grouping by fives help us identify quantities. In fact, our children need to visualize the quantities, but they can only do that in groupings of five. Here's the problem. A lot of us love to use manipulatives, right? And so we find these really cool manipulatives. Sometimes it's Cuisinaire rods, sometimes it's blocks, sometimes it's Lego blocks, um, sometimes it's tally sticks um, in a row. However, if they're not grouped, you cannot visualize the quantity. How is a child to determine how many is in that grouping? They have to count, right? And what we want to do is pull our kids away from counting, don't we? We need to group by fives. So what is a good manipulative to help you do that? The ale abacus. Let me show you how it works. Take a look at this. This one row, this top row, has five blue beads and five yellow beads. That total, 10. We are grouping by fives and 10. Going a little bit further, take a look at, how, at the rows. You have five rows that start with the blue beads and then it flips. The next five rows are the yellow beads. So if I were to say scoot seven rows, of, seven rows of beads over, you are immediately going to go to this row because you can see five and two more is seven. Isn't that cool? <laughs> okay, so let's move on. Entering quantities on the abacus. The first step is to start with what the child knows. So you're going to say, McKenna, show me three fingers. Three fingers, great. Then you're going to say, put three beads on the abacus and they're going to scoot three beads over. They're able to recognize that. Now, some children start off by counting one, two, three, because they've gotten in the habit of counting up to this point. So if they do that, that's fine. Clear the abacus and say, now I want you to show me three beads without counting. Just go to the three and scoot them over. And almost always they do it right away. Okay, so you're going to work with the quantity. After your child it learns the quantity, gets comfortable with the quantity, then and only then do you show them the symbol of three. And notice I said symbol of three. That symbol there is not the quantity of three. That is just how we write the quantity of three if we were to write it down, right? Correct? <laughs> so let's move on. How many is that? Five. All the fingers of one hand and also all of the blue beads on that first wire. And that is the symbol of five. After they learn it, then we can tell them what the symbol is and how to write it. How many is that? That is seven. We have five and two. Five blue beads, two yellow beads. 
once our child grasps that and it sees how seven, what seven looks like in the quantity realm, then we can show them how we write it as a symbol, seven. How many is this? 10. So we have five blue beads, five yellow beads that total 10. And once your child understands that, then we can show them how we write 10. That is the symbol for the quantity of 10. Now, early on in levels A and B, we have the child build what we call the abacus stairs. And so you can see here, you know, 10, 9, 8, 7, it kind of looks like little steps, right? Well, what I love about this activity is while the child is focusing on this side, subconsciously, they're also seeing this side, right? Okay, and we also know that one whole row is totaling of 10. So if I have one over here, I can see that there are nine beads over here. One plus nine is equal to 10. Isn't that cool? So your child is subconsciously learning their addition facts of 10 simply by building the stairs. For example, what, is, what do I need to add to four to get to 10? Six. See how that works? Okay, you're saying, great, so what? Wonderful information, Ra Rachel, but what can I do with this? Well, let me tell you, <laughs> you can use it to help your child learn their math facts, learn arithmetic. Let me show you how that works. So here we have adding. If I'm going to add four plus three, the child who does not learn to subitize and who does not use the abacus as an assistant, as a tool, um, they're going to do four plus three more, four, five, six, seven. They're going to count on their fingers, right? The child who is subitizing and learning through the abacus, they're going to scoot four beads over. They're going to scoot another three beads over, scoot it over and squish them together. And what do they have? You have seen that before, that is seven. Just like that, they're able to visualize. Now, when my children were first learning their arithmetic fat, math facts, or their addition math facts, they were actually picturing the abacus in their minds. If I were to say, what is four plus three? My daughter McKenna would be scooting four beads over in her mind, three more, see the two yellow beads and tell me the number is seven, just like that. And I know for us adults who were so busy memorized symbol plus symbol equals symbol and symbol minus symbol equals symbol, it sounds a little odd and different, but I can tell you this, it is so much more accurate when, they're, when my child visualizes the abacus, they see the picture in their mind, not only are they faster, but they're much more accurate. What do you do with the larger numbers though? Okay, what about something like seven plus five? That's a lot bigger and it's more than one row, isn't it? Well, let's use two rows, seven plus five. First of all, do you see two rows of five, two groups of five? Five plus five is what? 10. And how many yellow beads are out there? Two. What's the answer? 12. Seven plus five is 12. The child is able to get to that answer simply by looking at the abacus or visualizing the abacus in their mind. So much quicker. How about another one? Nine plus five? How many yellow beads? Four? 14. As opposed to the child who is just learning by counting nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. See how powerful subitizing is? Let's try one more. Nine plus seven. Look at the yellow beads first. How many are there? <laughs> Six and 10 is 16. Isn't that crazy? Doesn't it blow your mind? Fabulous. Your child is going to accurately and quickly get to those math fact answers so much better when they are using subitizing. Multiplication. Yes, you can use this for multiplication. Six times two. Well, what is six times two? It's basically six taken two times, right? So here it is on the abacus. You see the 10. How many yellow beads? Two. Six times two is 12. What about six times four? How many tens do we have there? We have two sets of tens and four yellow beads, 24. That's our answer. Okay, I'm gonna stretch you just a little bit, okay? Nine times three. Well, we already talked about how each row has a total of 10 beads in it, right? Nine is really close to 10, isn't it? So let's just for a moment pretend that we have the problem 10 times three or three rows of 10, okay? So we're gonna pretend that we have 30, but we really kind of don't. We have only nine, so we're gonna take away those three. So we are basically having 
three rows of 10, which is 30, minus those three, which gives us 27. Subitizing, you're able to see and manipulate how to use what you are seeing to get to those answers cor uh, correctly and quickly. Isn't that great? So I hope this has helped you understand subitizing and why Right Start Math emphasizes its usage. It is powerful, isn't it? If you have found this video helpful, it would be great if you clicked like. And if you know someone who is looking for a math program, share this video with them. Until next time, have a great week, everybody.